Hey guys, do you have an old Steam Link sitting around that you're not using? Well, don't let it collect dust. I'm going to show you how to natively install RetroArch on it so you can get to playing your retro games as fast as possible. So this is actually incredibly easy to do, and the only thing you really need besides the Steam Link itself is a keyboard and mouse that you can plug into the Steam Link, uh, the Steam Link native controller, and of course a USB drive, because we're going to want to install some software on the Steam Link. So let's jump right into it. Uh, big credits and shout out goes to a couple of people who set up guides on the Steam community forums. Links to their guides and all resources are going to be down in the description below as well as timestamps to everything throughout this entire video tutorial. So let's jump right into it. The first thing you're going to want to do is format your USB stick to FAT32. Um, to do that, just plug it into your computer. If you're on Windows 10, you'll see something like this. We're going to plug the USB stick into the computer and it'll pop up. So there's my 8GB USB memory stick. Uh, you'll want to right click on it and go down to format. You can click on that and make sure it's selected to FAT32 and hit start. I've already done this on mine so I'm not going to redo it. Now that your USB stick has been formatted, you're going to want to go down to one of the links I have below in the description and download RetroArch. It's version 1.77 and included with the package are all the cores that you're going to need to emulate uh, a good chunk of old retro games. Now these cores are essentially the emulators that you need and the ones that come packaged with RetroArch 1.77 have been tested thoroughly so they should work for you just fine out of the box. Once this package has been downloaded, we're going to pull some things out of it that we need in a moment. But first we need to create some folders on your USB key. Go to the root of your drive. You're going to want to create this Steam Link folder here. Within that, you want an apps directory and a config. Inside of the config directory is a system, so make that. In here, you're going to want to create a text file called enable underscore ssh. So, we're going to need this in a moment because we're also going to download FileZilla and we're going to be connecting to the Steam Link from our computer over our home network. And this file is going to allow us to do that. So we can go up and you see that there's also an apps directory. There are two things here that we're going to want to put on to uh, our thumb drive and that's the RetroArch folder and the USB mount. Directory. Now both of these are apps for the Steam Link. Uh, RetroArch of course is going to be our overlay that lets us load the different cores or aka the emulators to load our games. And USB mount is an app that lets us load uh, different uh, all your ROM files and things like that off of a attached USB hard drive or USB drive to the Steam Link. Now this is important because the Steam Link only has I think like 300 megabytes natively uh, for memory that we can work with on the device. Uh, that's obviously not going to be enough if you get into uh, importing a whole bunch of like PS1 games or if you want to try getting into N64 emulation things like that. Obviously that memory isn't going to go very far with only 300 megabytes. So as you can see on the desktop, we have uh, zipped archives for RetroArch 177 and USB mount here. You can just open these up and take the directories and click and drag them right onto your USB key into your apps directory. Same thing for USB mount, just open it up. There it is, just click and drag it into your apps directory. So with everything now on your USB stick, you can go ahead and eject it from your computer. Uh, you just go to your drive, right click on it, and hit eject. Just like that. Now you want to take that USB stick and plug it into your Steam Link while it's powered off. Once we boot it back up, you're going to see RetroArch on the main menu. Now that you can see RetroArch on the main menu of the Steam Link, you can safely take out your USB stick. Uh, RetroArch and USB mount 
have effectively copied themselves over to the working memory of the Steam Link, which is great. Uh, it's important to also note at this point, uh, the guide says that if nothing shows up, you can power off and try a different port with your USB stick. Uh, it's sometimes finicky depending on the brand that you're using. I'm using a generic Kingston, it's an 8GB, I didn't have any issues, but if you do, just swap ports and try the process again. If that also causes issues for you, just grab a different USB stick and try that. It's also really important to make sure that you do pull the USB stick out before you power off the Steam Link, otherwise you're going to overwrite your installation next time you boot up the device. With the Steam Link turned on, you're also going to want to make note of what your IP address on your home network is. We're going to use this uh, once we boot up FileZilla and FTP into the Steam Link. Alright, this is the super fun part now. Uh, if you haven't already downloaded and installed FileZilla, I'll have a link to it also down in the description below. Uh, but install it and what we're going to want to do here is FTP over our home network into the Steam Link. So your host address is your IP address for the Steam Link. Uh, for me that's 192.168.1.107. The username is root, the password is all lowercase steam link 123, and the port's going to be 22. Hit quick connect, and what you'll see is the root directory of your steam link down in this window down here. So right above we'll see steam and home. Click on the home directory. Down here you can see apps. Uh, this is where RetroArch should be installed, so click on apps. And there's RetroArch and USB mount. Go into RetroArch, and here you can find ROMs and cores. And again, the cores are essentially your emulators, and I'll have a package where you can download all the emulators that are known to work on the Steam Link natively. Uh, and of course, ROMs. So you can go into ROMs and set up all your directories for your ROMs. Uh, I have Game Boy, NES, and Super NES, uh, and then you can go to cores. So these are the ones that I have installed right now. Um, I think this one's Game Boy, Genesis, uh, I think that's Game Boy Advance one, Nintendo, PlayStation, and Super Nintendo ones. When you download, extract, and open up all the other cores, um, you're going to see them in your directory just like this, and they're all .so files. Uh, so you're basically just going to want to select the ones that you want, and click and drag them over. Um, there's an N64 one right there. You just click, and drag it over to FileZilla and let go. And it's as simple as that. You can see it copying over to the Steam Link and it just copied that core right over to the Steam Link over your home network. When you're done uh, copying everything over that you wanna copy over, you can close this. I'm just gonna leave it open for now and minimize it. Same with this, you might want to go back and forth a few times uh, as you test different emulators um, because you're good, probably going to want to download things from the net and copy things over back and forth. So you can leave them open or close them, that's up to you. So again, it's also important to keep in mind that the Steam Link only has 300 megabytes of data on it. So if you want to put like every single ROM that you own onto a USB stick or on a drive, you can do that and use USB mount, the other app that we installed previously, to load those ROMs from a drive. So now that you're done setting up the Steam Link to run RetroArch natively on it, uh, you have to boot up RetroArch. So let's go back over to the Steam Link and I'll show you how to set things up from there. Alright, so from here we can boot up RetroArch. Just hit A on your Steam Link controller. And here's the main menu. So it's pretty simple. There are a lot of different things that you can do to configure this. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the online updater and go down to update joypad profiles. Press A and you'll download them from the internet. It's going to download this autoconfig zip file and extract it. And this is essentially going to make sure that you have all the basic configuration files needed for most gamepads. Once that's complete, you can go down to settings. Go to input devices. 
and you can set up any additional gamepads that you might have. For example, I have a Wii U Pro Controller that I use wirelessly with the device. The Steam Link natively supports Bluetooth controllers, which is amazing. Uh, so go to Max Users. I set mine up to four. I also like to press quit twice, just in case I accidentally hit something on the keyboard and it boots out of RetroArch. That's obviously no good if you're in the middle of a game. It's important to note here that when you're in an emulator, you can change the toggle gamepad combo. Uh, pressing start and select, for example, will bring up the menu. But we can change it to different combinations as well. But for now, we're gonna leave it at start and select. If you do happen to have a wireless controller, a Wii U Pro controller like me, you can go down to user one binds. And under user one device index, you can see it says Steam Controller. I can press right on the analog stick and change my Steam Controller to the Wii U Pro Controller. Now if you do this with a different type of controller, uh, it's automatically going to shift over to that controller and you're no longer going to be able to use your Steam Link controller for your user one. Uh, so just pick up your other controller and you'll be able to navigate your menus again. Like I said, there are so many things you can do here to uh, configure your RetroArch. I could make an entire another video on that, but for now, I'm just going to focus on uh, the absolute basics, and that, of course, involves how to actually load a ROM. So, again, I've said this a few times, but the cores are your emulators. So you're going to want to go to Load Core, go down to Cores, and this is where we put all of our different emulators when we FTP'd into the Steam Link. So let's just boot up SNES 9X. That's a pretty popular Super Nintendo emulator. Once we select that, we can go to content, go to our Super Nintendo directory, and let's select Zelda 3. A link to the past. Once you hit your main key, which is A, or for me it's B because it's backwards on the Wii U Pro Controller, you can select SNES 9X 2010. And just like that, we have some Zelda Link to the Past. All right, so while you're in the middle of playing game, you're going to want to bring up your main menu at some point and save a state. So depending on what you set your key bindings to previously, uh, by default, it's start and select. You can hit those. Uh, and let's try to do it. It's difficult with Zelda because of the menu coming up when you hit start. Uh, but this is what happens. The quick menu comes up. And you can do a bunch of different things here. Uh, you can restart the game if you want, you can close the game out, you can take a screenshot. Uh, but what I really love is that you can save your states. So just to show you how this works as an example, let's hit save state. And it will take a moment to save the state. and it's saved to slot zero. And so we can keep playing the game or we can quit. And just as an example, we'll go to a different part on the map here. Go back to our quick menu and we'll load our state. And there we are, back where we saved our state. All right, so it's really as simple as that. We went from having a dusty old Steam Link sitting around doing absolutely nothing, having this awesome retro box sitting underneath our TV where we can boot up any of our favorite emulators and play our games anytime we want. So 
Uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and a little bit inspirational to you. I hope that you work through it yourself. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any problems. I'd be more than happy to help you out with it. Uh, you can also jump into our Discord and I or one of our mods will help you there too. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. This video is made possible thanks to your support. Please continue to like, comment on, and share Emulated with your friends. You can also level up your support by becoming a Patreon supporter like these awesome people. It's really hard to play backwards, or through watching the camera I should say. But uh, let's see if we can get into the tunnel. So much lightning. Yep. Oh, we're on the wrong side. <laughs> we're on the wrong side. All right, Zelda. I think the next game, Zelda should save herself. I think it's about time.